We will talk about pharmaceutical marketing malpractices and how to deal with them. Now, a recent report by a public health group on pharmaceutical marketing practices has revealed widespread use of bribes and inducement by pharma companies to the doctors in order to increase the sale of their products. For doctors, the Medical Council of India has a code of ethics which bars them from accepting any gifts, cash, travel facilities or hospitality from pharma companies. However, for the pharmaceutical companies, there is a voluntary code known as Uniform Code of Pharmaceutical Marketing Practices or UCPMP, which experts say is not a very effective mechanism to check the prevailing malpractices. So what is the best way to tackle this issue and or what all can be done on this aspect? Uh, for more on this, we're joined by a distinguished panel of guests. Let me first introduce the guest to you, beginning with Dr. Y.K. Gupta, President, AIMS Bhopal, and he's also the Principal Advisor to the Government of India and the Department of Biotechnology. We also have with us um, Aditi Tandon, Special Correspondent the Tribune, somebody who keeps uh, a tab on uh, the developments in the health sector. And we're also joined by Mr. B.K. Gupta. He's the Vice President, Northern Region of the Indian Drug Manufacturers Association and is also the Managing Director of a private drug manufacturing company. We'll also be joined by the Joint Secretary of the Department of Pharmaceuticals later, but let me first begin the show. And let me begin with you, Aditi. Let's start the show by, uh, you know, taking a look at different laws or, uh, you know, guidances or uh, rules, regulations which are there in place, both for doctors and pharmaceutical companies right now. Yeah, so when you introduced your show, you were right in saying that, first of all, let's look at the doctors themselves. Because if the doctors were not to accept inducements, there would be no necessity of this debate at all. So the Medical Council of India came up with these very important rules, the Code of Ethics for Doctors, and these were last updated in 2002. And these Code of Ethics are very comprehensive. And frankly, these are part of the law because the Indian Medical Council Act of 1956 gives force to the regulations of Medical Council of India. Now, of course, we are in a transition stage uh, and we should not forget that the National Medical Commission Bill has superseded the Indian Medical Council Bill. So there's a bit of a gap in that area. But if we look at the past law, the Medical Council of India Code of Ethics are a legally enforceable mm -hmm. uh, group of laws. And these are basically ethical rules that every doctor is expected to follow. What do these rules do? These define the perfect doctor and the first thing that they say is that a doctor is supposed to be a noble person and he is only to advance his medical field and have the service of the patient topmost in his mind and that financial considerations inducements of any sort have to be a very subordinate consideration mm -hmm. then these code of ethics also go on to explain what the unethical practices are so they clearly say that a doctor will not accept any kind of commission you know Frankly, this whole practice of medical representatives being hired by pharma companies to push and to encourage their products in sales is frankly not very legal. Mm -hmm. Only if the law were to be enforced. Now, it's a debatable issue that the Medical Council of India, uh, whether it was ever in a position to enforce any kind of ethics or codes on its own members because the Parliamentary Standing Committee on Health which looked at the functioning of MCI and recommended that this body is, um, you know, is, uh, uh, cannot be repaired anymore. Mm -hmm. It is so corrupt that it needs to be replaced. It cannot be corrected. And that was the Parliamentary Standing Committee report, which paved the way for the National Medical Commission. Mm -hmm. That is the part of doctors. Now, you very correctly mentioned the voluntary code. For the, the pharma companies, yes. Mm -hmm. See, the pharma companies have long been resisting any kind of regulation. And the government has also played along because India is the pharmacy um, hub of the whole world. We are not only producing pharmaceutical products for ourselves, we are also exporting a lot of pharmaceutical products. In fact, majority of the HIV drugs, the antiretrovirals, are provided by India and Africa depends a lot on us. Mm -hmm. So keeping all those considerations in mind, the government allowed the pharma companies to self-regulate. Okay. You've already said that's not working and that's the reason Sati has come out with the report. Okay. Now the last serious attempt that was made to actually have a legally binding force or an order was in 2017. 
at that time the essential commodities control of unethical practices in marketing of drugs order was formulated by the ministry of chemicals and fertilizers and it was awaiting the nod of the law ministry in 2017 what did these uh, orders say they very clearly said that any pharmaceutical firm that tries to bribe a doctor by giving him any kind of uh, financial cover or gifts or hampers to cover his um, travel or even to cover his you know entertainment expenditure mm -hmm. they will all be liable to very serious punishments and the maximum punishment that was prescribed was that if a pharma company is giving inducement for 1 lakh rupees okay then that particular company will invite a one year ban on its top selling brand mm -hmm. and top selling brand was to be calculated for the past 12 months and that company would be allowed to contest this ban only if it pays 10 crore in penalty. So structures were to be put in place. Okay. Again, the pharma companies exerted pressure and this is in a limbo. So that's where we stand. Okay. So as of now, you know, there, there, there is this voluntary code for pharmaceutical yes. companies, UCPNP. And for the doctors, it is a code of ethics, which is there. And these are the rules and regulations when we talk about this particular situation. So let's now hear views from both sides. And we have Dr. Y.K. Gupta and Mr. B.K. Gupta as well from the pharmaceutical company side, Indian Drug Manufacturers Association. Let's begin with you, Mr. Gupta, since the recent study again points out something which has been pointed out earlier by other public health groups as well. That is the focus given by the pharmaceutical companies very much on the medical representatives, the MRs, on their, you know, uh, the, not the technical aspect, but on their mac marketing aspect. Actually, we have to send the medical representative to educate the doctor for the new development so that that is in the benefit of the patient only. Mm -hmm. it, it has never been our intention to bribe the doctor. We are living in a society where in every sphere of life you will find some black sheep. You cannot generalize the industry that everybody is doing that. Mm -hmm. So doctors may be there, industry people may be there. There are big and small companies so we cannot generalize that issue. There may be black sheep, one or two, per, one or two percent. Even that is a very big percentage. Mm -hmm. So I do not subscribe to this idea of bribing the doctors and all that. Okay, but uh, as per the uh, you know uh, the data which we have with us, the UCPMP, which is the voluntary code uh, for the uh, pharmaceutical manufacturing companies. Uh, there is not even a single action which has been taken by the pharmaceutical company associations, be it uh, IDMA or the other associations. So does that mean everything is all right because the reports given by the public health companies, uh, you know, the research done by them shows otherwise? Actually, we have not received any uh, such complaint in our association. If that was the case, we, we would have taken action against that. Okay, but how do you see? Is that voluntary code enough? We have not received any such complaint. Is that voluntary From code enough, Mr. Any Gupta? individual company? Yeah, I think it is enough. It is enough for us. Okay. And uh, that Madam rightly pointed out, we we have uh, uh, we have such an industry which is promoting the Indian brand in the international market, and today in USA. In, uh, in India, more than 600 units are FDA USA and 600 units are EU registered. How these companies can go to that level of bribing the doctors? Okay. Dr. Gupta, from the other side of this particular story, you know, Although Mr. Gupta says that his association, that is IDMA, has not received any complaint, but uh, there are uh, you know data available in response to an uh, RTI query which were filed by the activists that there were at least a more than a dozen complaints which ministries have received and they had forwarded to the concerned associations. But let's come to the doctor's side of it. There is a code of ethics which is in place as far as MCI is concerned. And if at all there is any bribe or inducement from the pharmaceutical companies or their representatives, the doctors are required not to respond to that. See, this is, uh, this is a bit a complex issue, I would say. And to exaggerate it and say that every doctor in India is being bribed and taking 
undue advantage is absolutely not correct mm -hmm. and should not be propagated. I agree with the, my industry partner, whatever he, who I do not know, but there are certainly black sheep in the country, in as well as in medical profession, as well as in industry, who do this practice, which is bad. Nobody can say that this is a good practice. This is illegal. This is unethical. Must not be done. And if it is found, then there should be appropriate discouragement, punishment, or whatever things you do. So, there are two important things here I would say. One is uh, the continued medical education of the new product, new devices, new medicine through medical representative, which is often not complete, not accurate. But in absence of there is any mechanism, mm -hmm. that is perhaps one thing which the medical representatives go on to penetrate. Therefore, Medical Council of India very rightly said that every doctor has to attend continued medical education, have a credit earned, and that's why people are attending these credits. So, I would say the situation of 20 years old is not, was not 10 years and is not now. Earlier okay. it was more, now it is much, much less. Maybe not in major uh, or maybe reputed or self-conscious doctors, but it also happens in hospitals, corporate hospitals, big hospitals, where there is not incentive, not bribes, but you can say different type of advantages with the corporate hospitals or any other hospitals they take. Therefore, there has to be multiple things. Self-regulation, mm -hmm. ethics, training in ethics right from the beginning, and the regulation for the hospital, regulation for the hospitals, and regulation for the doctors, and also the pharmacists. Okay. And that is why you might have seen the government of India has done the trade margin rationalization when there is a no much margin of the drug and all these things will be, uh, will, will be much, much less. Mm -hmm. The worst thing in this scenario is, forget about the money, bribe, but the wrong knowledge, wrong prescribing by the doctor under influence of such representative, if at all that happens, that means doctors may prescribe something which is not required. That may be the reason of antimicrobial resistance. Mm -hmm. When the high end resistance because of the cost factor people are prescribing without any knowledge but under influence of some interest, that is a much more dangerous trend. So, I would agree with you partly that this is a certainly wrong practice. If anybody is doing, must be dealt with the law of the land. Mm -hmm. But I don't agree that each and every doctor in the country is uh, is uh, doing this. Okay. Uh, we uh, Let me go back to uh, Mr. Gupta. And Mr. Gupta, let, let me bring you uh, back on, on a different point, uh, a related one, and directly related specifically. You know, another set of data says that uh, the... 10 or 12 largest pharmaceutical companies have spent just a, you know, a, a marginal percentage of their sales on research and development, whereas it is, uh, you know, uh, on marketing, it's almost 200 to 300 percent. So why focus so much on marketing? Why not focus on research and development? Mar marketing expenses, not for the doctors only. It is for the uh, trade also, uh, medical representative salary, manager salaries, uh, then uh, literature and all that. It is not uh, for the doctors. Okay. And research and development, you see, margins are not there for the company. They will spend only out of the margins on research and development. Still, it is increasing year to year, on year to year basis. Okay. Okay, we are also joined by Mr. Navdi Prinwa, the Joint Secretary of the Department of Pharmaceuticals uh, of the Government of India. Uh, Mr. Rinwa, welcome uh, to the show. And uh, one important question at this stage here is that is the self-regulation by the pharmaceutical industry, which was expected in the form of the UCPMP, enough? Or is the government planning now to bring in some sort of code you know, uh, with penalties maybe for the pharmaceutical companies as well? 
thank you uh, shall for inviting me uh, uh, i must tell you that we have uh, the department of pharmaceutical has uh, formulated a uniform code for uh, uh, pharmaceutical marketing practices which uh, has been adopted uh, voluntarily by the pharma association uh, the pharma manufacturing association of pharmaceutical companies mm-hmm. since 1 january 2015 uh a- as of now uh, there are no plans to make uh, this code mandatory or prescribe any punishments uh, for violations it is for the associations to look into the complaints and uh, take action at their level against the uh, fault uh, the companies which are at fault okay but uh, you know the uh, critics say and some of the experts also say that uh, this voluntary code is not making a, much of a difference uh, because the uh, re- reports which are coming in from public health groups uh, point out to rampant use of uh, bribe or inducement by the pharmaceutical companies in uh, you know marketing their products obviously not all of them and obviously not to all the doctors yeah um, uh, even the department sometimes receives such complaints so we forward these complaints to the concerned association uh, to which the company against which the complaint has been made and it is for the associations to take action at their level okay so do you do you feel or does does the government feel that as of now the voluntary code is enough for the, on this particular issue uh presently there is no proposal to to make this code uh, uh mandatory or prescribe any punishments for violation of the code uh, it is uh, as of now up to the associations uh, there have been demands uh, that uh, this code should be made mandatory or some sh- law should be brought but uh, no consensus has so far uh, emerged in the government on this issue okay thank you mr rinwa uh, thank you so much uh, for being with us on the show here aditi that uh, you know clearly uh, settles the situation as you started in the beginning that uh, as of now it still is a voluntary code but mr gupta from the idma is saying that it's not uh, such big uh, as as big a problem as it might be understood by many yes there are some uh, bad players uh, in the pharmaceutical marketing industry but not all of them see when you have unethical medical practices or for instance let's have when you debate any law any law is always for the minority i beg to differ with my co-panelists who have said that see this debate is not taking place because every doctor is accepting bribes the law is actually necessary to contain the black sheep in the profession even if you look at criminology you look at the history of crimes in india look at the history of murders or rapes these are exceptions to the norm you know not everybody in the country is going around killing people but you have a law to contain murder mm-hmm. not everybody is going around raping women but you have a very strong criminal law amendment against sexual assault so nobody's it's nobody's case that the whole community is to be blamed of course there are black sheep as mr gupta was pointing out but how do you deal with the black sheep no the joint secretary in the ministry is pointing out that it is for the associations to look at these cases of violations as for the ucpmp i'm sorry i am a health consumer can i as a consumer of health demand it as a right that i have the right to know which are these black sheep why would you not name them for instance on the ministry websites you know what is self regulation all about that you point out the gaps in your own systems and you flag those gaps mm-hmm. there are these kinds of policies being practiced at every level in every sector where you incentivize people who are doing well and you disincentivize firms or brands that are not doing well mm-hmm. so naturally the ministry of chemicals and fertilizers does have a database because they do receive complaints which they forward to the associations can we know in the public platforms can we know for the sake of transparency what happens to those complaints okay. does the government even bother to ask these associations to send back action taken reports even if you don't have a law nothing stops you from monitoring the self regulatory process right mm-hmm. also there has to be this debate around whether or not the doctors will ever agree to prescribe medicines by their generic names why is there this fixation and obsession to prescribe medicines by brand names prime minister narendra modi a while ago had pointed out in a speech 
then let's start prescribing medicines and generics and let's have a law around it. And the entire pharmaceutical sector had come up, up, against, up against arms, you know, uh, when the Prime Minister spoke this. Whereas the Medical Council of India in 2015 had actually come up with a code which said that let every doctor prescribe medicines in generic, generic. form and not, let's not promote brands. So a lot of unethical practices also lead to overpricing of drugs. You know, mm -hmm. if you look at the economics of um, uh, pharma companies and economics of uh, medicine marketing in the country, it's a very complex debate. But my point precisely is that both the panelists agree here that there are black sheep black in sheep. the community. What is anybody doing about these black sheep? Do we know who they are? At least we should have the right to know. Okay, yeah. that's, that's an important point and the other one as well. Uh, I'd like to bring uh, Dr. Gupta on, on the generic uh, you know, medicines issue, something which has been pointed out by none other than the Prime Minister himself. So, and the MCI also has uh, a guideline on that. So why not we switch over to that, you know, prescribing medicines, medicines by their generic names? Maybe a part of this problem will be resolved? I will start the story when I was doing MD pharmacology in 19, late 1970s. And since then, we have been talking, emphasizing on prescribing generics. Generics, generics, generics. 40 years have passed. And incidentally, we are proud of our Prime Minister now who has so emphatically put this pressure on entire country's health system, including doctor, pharmacists and that, that prescribe generics. It has a tremendous advantage in terms of the economy, in terms of a rational prescribing, in terms of a cut down on unnecessary use of drugs because there are lots of fixed dose combinations which are not required and so on and so forth. And cut down on unethical practices by both sides as well. When you say irrational practices means that. However, the major limitation of generic acceptability in public in India today is the confidence in quality. I have been preaching that the costlier drug, the branded drug, not necessarily mean that they are the best. Generic drug, cheaper drug does not mean they are bad. But the perception is there. Mm -hmm. And the answer to this perception, which I have told in Niti in a couple of forums, that we have to have a huge infrastructure for quality testing of the drug. If I, as a consumer, feel that this drug is not working, I should not jump on the conclusion that this drug is not working because this is generic. This can be because of the diagnosis can be wrong, the patient compliance can be faulty, the bug may be different or the patient may not be taking it or maybe a number of things. Lastly, and maybe sometimes it is common mm -hmm. that the drug is of no quality. Okay. Unless you put this, you should not blame generic. Same is the case when you say bribing a doctor, mm -hmm. unless you prove, you cannot say, generalize that the doctors are bribed, uh, are all taking a bribe. You cannot generalize that each industry is unethical. There are industries which are absolutely ethical. But no one is generalizing. Yeah. We're, we're all talking about the black sheep here. The black sheep is in all community for all crime. Nobody will deny it. And when Aditi and says that the health consumer will, has I a right to know with, who's the black agree sheep. I fully agree with it. And there should be the rules. I, my emphasis would be, Make rule, make guidelines which are enforceable. Okay. Which are enforceable. Well, otherwise, I'm... otherwise you make rule and no enforcement, it dilutes. Okay. Dr. Uh, Gupta just said that you prove a doctor has taken bribe and then you speak about that doctor. But who's going to prove? Because the associations are self-regulating. Doctors that's where, have to regulate that's themselves. That's where we're talking sure, about sure, the sure. guidelines and then the rules there as well. You know, let me bring that, in, we're running short of time, but let me bring in Mr. B.K. Gupta here because these are two important points, you know. Mr. Gupta, one aspect is the use of generic names in prescriptions given by doctors. One is if the industry is not in this favor, why? And second is, as Aditi put it on record, that the health consumer has a right to know who are the black sheeps. Definitely they have the right to know the black sheeps. But whenever we received some complaints, we found them not correct. So how we can just say that they are the black sheeps when, okay. when there was no fault of them? Secondly, generics. <clears throat> <clears throat> My view is that industry has all the right to promote its brand 
and uh, when we are appointing representatives they are to promote brands if it is generic the entire thing will go to the chemist chemist himself will prescribe medicines there will be no need of doctor then there there is problem of uh, dumping of cheap uh, g- generics which are not uh, quality products okay okay dr gupta Your, your, your final comment on that, the, the I, genetic aspect. I, this is not a so easy thing which can be concluded in a half an hour panel discussion, mm-hmm. but I agree with uh, Mr. Gupta from industry. Unless we have 100% confidence in our quality assurance system in the country in generics, it will be very difficult to, to implement. And okay. that's why the industry is also very ready that you assure... that every generic is the same standard they will not be ever solve this okay so generic is uh, is important equally important is what the government is very actively pursuing is doing is the assuring quality of the products okay so there it is as our panelists have pointed out it is a very complex issue and an ongoing debate as well but as our panelists are pointing out we will have to build on our capacities in terms of quality assurance and-